Jade, Jade 2 is, and hold on to your seat for this one, it's a self-reactive, self-adapted, self-modeling program for predictive force deployment. This exercise, I should say, that's running in the background that not too many people are aware of, and that is probably by design. And what are we thinking this uh, thing is that's running in the background? Well, in short, uh, the software that they've developed, this Jade 2, um, it, it's, it's <clears throat> technology uh, that will not be battles directed by generals and military commanders, but by a computer, mm. all right? The Jade 2 system is a network-centric software-based AI program at the helm. Um, I read it in um, papers that, let me go back, this, this isn't actually my conclusion. I mean, everything that I'm going to be discussing with you here today is in the documents. And before we get into some of the specifics that this system is able to do and will be doing, I just want to say that the information um, that I had found on the net that we will be discussing has been highly sanitized. Wow. I believe it's been, because there's things that are not there that should be there when you're talking about a technical system like this that just, they weren't available in the papers. All right, well, why don't we start talking about what the J2 system is capable of, and uh, we can go down this and I hope this isn't too boring, but you can, um, I'm, the J I'm, I'm thinking it won't be. Okay. So don't let that be a concern. <laughs> All right. Uh, this system ha uses vast sums of information collected on individuals, groups, population centric regions and large geographic areas and or countries. It then dumps all that information into a module called an HTA, um, which is a human terrain analysis tool, which then analyzes the data to develop an HTS or human terrain system. Uh, once the human terrain system is established, it, de it determines, and this is gonna start to get really hairy, okay? It determines behavioral parameters for norms of individuals, groups, population-centric areas, et cetera. The establishment of these uh, formulated parameters is known as the human domain, which we've all been hearing about out, out there in the media and on the blogospheres and everything. It can then identify, extract, or eliminate perceived threats or targets based on deviations from these norms, okay? Jade can also examine examine the human terrain system over time with the use of thousands of remote sensors, <clears throat> both audio and visual, as, re as well as real-time communication monitoring and um, other types of HTA tools to change or rewrite its program parameters in a particular human domain. This new information or program template as well as any other previous program scenarios, is then stored in its prodigy module, which is actually the battle planning suggestion module, module and it can be um, retrieved at any time for any intended purpose. <clears throat> now, as this, um, as this is a knowledge-based or data-driven mixed initiative or military slash civilian application, it's able to generate complex deployment and battle plans in seconds versus hours, days, or weeks. It can create holographic battlefield simulations on the fly. Um, the deployment or, or battle planning with this system starts with the receipt of a mission statement 
which is then run through a CBR, or case-based reasoning module, to produce an ACOA or an adaptive course of action. The word adaptive is key. What's it adaptive to? It adapts itself to the changing human domain, us. It adapts its plans based on changing terrain of human activity. What are some of the elements that are classified as human activity? Okay, your communications, your financial transactions, your travel patterns, habits, behavioral patterns, emotions. Yes, this system can read and measure human emotion and social media content. Okay, the one paper goes on to say that activity can change rapidly in a crisis event or a warfare scenario and it's able to change or rewrite its own COA or course of action on the fly. The system is aware. It has total awareness, even in a rapidly changing environment. What um, I've be, been able to glean from all these papers and that is that these huge data dump centers, like the one in Blufftail and many, many other ones, are connected into this global information grid. So if you want to look at it from that, st that um, perspective, the global information grid would be the central point on the okay. network system. It takes me a minute to get my mind around these things, but I'm, I'm with you. Keep rolling. Okay. Now, format, which is the force management mo uh, module for this system, was developed by the MITRE Corporation, and it's used to support knowledge acquisition. Okay, that's data collection. That's what the NSA is performing on everyone, not just identified threats, but everyone. Why? Because the government now perceives the American people, I believe, as its greatest threat, and it will use a computer-driven military to clamp us down. Patriots will be classified as terrorists, and the true terrorists, uh, the, the um, U.S. puppet government we have out there who receives its directives and agendas from the ruling elite, they'll be deemed patriots to be protected at all costs. Makes sense. Okay, the third module in this system is known as PARCA. It's able to handle extremely complex structured queries against large knowledge bases or large databases, data dumps. Um, have you ever wondered why, or has anybody ever asked the question, why the NSA is telling everyone they're only collecting metadata or meta tags? Okay, meta, meta tags tags or metadata contain virtually no information or data in and of themselves. Meta tags or metadata only have, the, only have value if they're um, indexed to a much larger information source or file in these immense databases. So, you know, this is, you know, in my humble opinion, this is just another example of deception through misdirection. Oh, we're just collecting, you know, your phone numbers you're passing by, and um, we're not keeping any of your emails or your text messages or anything like that. Well, if you look at how this system is structured, that's the critical data the system needs. It doesn't need, it can't work off metadags, tags, and metadata. I mean, <clears throat> they're virtually empty data until they're indexed to something or something is indexed to them. Uh, Jade, Jade 2 is, and hold on to your seat for this one, it's a self-reactive, self-adapted, self-modeling program for predictive force deployment. In other words, it can predict conflicts before they occur and react in a preemptive manner. It only think oh, okay. It kind of like it only it thinks in the present, but it can pr predict future events or human activity. And these conflicts are not conf confined to a warfare scenario either. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the predict and preempt capabilities can also be applied to scenarios of social unrest. And that's not just my opinion. That's stated right in the reports and the, the papers All right. on this software. Good grief. Okay. Okay. 
So let's look at some of the other key functional functionality or capabilities um, of this system. And right now we're just talking about the Jade system because that's what everybody's concerned about right now, Jade, Jade Helm. It can make high-level trade determinations. It makes decisions regarding casualties and targets in line with the overall mission objective. Okay. It is a total command uh, it has total command and control in an information intensive society. Now, from a military standpoint, the term command is more or less a legal or a behavioral standard of actions performed or not performed by military officers to which they can later be held ac accountable. The Jade system displaces that standard from individual commanders and places it on itself. Total command and control of all information over land, sea, air, space, and cyberspace is how they will master the human domain. It says that in the PDF slides. It says that in the software papers. Okay. It can perform machine interpretation of commander's intent. Think about that for a minute. You know, that's, that's kind of, you know, let me try and put this in perspective. Um, that's kind of like, all right, I, I pull up to my house, I pull in the driveway. My intent is to go in the house and sit, you know, watch TV. Now, am I going to enter the house by smashing my truck through an exterior wall, or am I going to enter the house by getting a key off my keychain and unlocking the door? I mean, that, to me, I mean, that, that is a scary aspect. Machine interpretation of commander's intent. I wonder if that's to eliminate the possibility of any, shall we say, freelancing out there or overriding some orders or something like that. I don't know. It could be. Okay. It could be, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, this, like I said before, you know, the system sits on a, a global information grid, which is a, um, how can I explain this? It's a flexible, scalable, and a dynamic architecture in order to support, support multilateral civilian and military operations. This global information grid is going to be an important aspect as we go through this. Okay. Oh, here was another subheading in um, one of the papers, and it was entitled The Process of Sense Making in Complex Human Endeavors. Quote This approach uses a set of cognitive constructs that translates tacit knowledge to the focal knowing of the objective world. End quote. How are they accomplishing this? They're mapping your mind. That's how they're doing it. And that they are creating these maps with all of the information that's being collected on everyone regarding every aspect of their life. Macrocognition. This is the process the system uses to uh, dissect the human behavioral process. It's cognitive and it's a cognitive and adaptive uh, learning uh, function. And it's um, okay, the, the macrocognition com component of the system, like I mentioned before, is a process of uh, dissecting human, the human behavioral process. Okay, it's cognitive and adaptive learning capabilities enables it to predict, predict intent. Now, we're not talking on the military side here. We're talking on either the enemy or civilian side, whichever way you want to look at it. So it can predict intent of an adversary or target as well as predict a range of potential behaviors of those targets. And it does this instantaneously. This doesn't require a bunch of military commanders sitting around a table. You know, going back and forth. Well, how should we handle this? I don't know. I think we should do it this way. The machine's making the, the system's making the decisions for them. Oh, here's another statement that was made in the paper entitled uh, The Tuesday Presentation to Justify the Rollout of Jade 2. And it says, quote, 
for a joint commander to define an instruction set to a civilian or military joint force mission to transform a failing state to an agreed upon non-failing end state is a problem, end quote. Okay, and this section goes on to say that, you know, rapidly changing dynamics presents a cognitively difficult task for commanders and practitioners. And the system will do that too. As it is not the be-all and the end-all. This is just a, a sub-layer, a layer on top of a much larger system that's already in place. Okay? Uh, Jade, can, uh, Jade 2 can reconfigure its own network to topography to optimize communication and data transfers. Um, in one of my other reports, I talked about BBN technologies, use of bandwidth extenders, um, on the cellular and wireless architecture networks? Well, this is what they're referring to. Um, an example of this might look like, you know, you're driving down the road, all of a sudden you lost cell phone service in a, in a particular area or for a particular time, when in actuality your bandwidth's been reallocated to the system. Because everything, absolutely everything, communications, everything else is tied into that global information grid. Oh, man. All right. Another command and control problem that these concept papers, they're not even concept papers because the, the, the software is being used now. Okay. Uh, the, another command and control problem this system is designed to handle is the fact that the enemy has always been able to adapt to a rapidly changing environment to hide itself from exposure. In order to combat this problem, okay, the kill chain had to be compressed from hours to seconds. The system removes the administrative delay in the kill chain. It has no moral compass, no empathy, or regrets. Wow. Thank you.